I hacked this Apple TV to run Linux. Now this video is mainly being made for fun. I just mainly wanted to show that this is actually possible. I have not really seen too many YouTube videos about how you can app or hack an Apple TV, but first of all, I'm gonna go through the specs to see if you should do this yourself. Now, first of all, I'm not going to be making a tutorial on how to put Linux on here. First of all, I do not have a spare Apple TV first generation. And I also do not want to erase this and put it on there because I'm very happy with the installation. So don't ask, I'm not gonna do it yet. So first of all, um, you might notice that it has a lack of actually functional ports. Now, first of all, you got your power in. That's kind of uh, that's kind of necessary. Um, you got some video component video. This was not well, this will not do composite, but you will get black and white output by putting your video on the green connector here if you composite. Now, it also has HDMI, which can also be adapted, and you can use an adapter for DVI, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's pretty much your video out. Um, you got Ethernet. There's also some Wi-Fi in here. You got one USB port. This is actually very, um, very important. And if that wasn't in there, this Apple TV would never be easily hackable. So, and then you got optical audio, which is obviously another thing that um, is used mainly for digital devices. You might notice that there is actually an IR sensor here for a remote. I do not know if I have one of them, but I'll go look. It will work with any basic. Apple TV remote that you use it with. If you have the basic software on here, that remote will work. Um, so, and obviously the white plastic one will also work as well. But I'm gonna hook this thing up and show you how Linux runs on this thing. Again, I'm not making a tutorial. Hi, studio room. Come on. Goodbye, studio room. You may know I've been actually um, doing this on my vlog channel. If you don't watch it, then you probably should. I will be hooking it up to here. Yes, I'll be using this old keyboard. Um, it's a little yellow, I need to use some retrobyte on it. But yeah, let's get this thing hooked up. First of all, you're gonna need to put down an Apple TV, obviously. Whoops, it's on a cable. And yeah, oh, geez, my tripod just gave out. <laughs> so you're also, uh, uh, no signal, yeah, no duh. <laughs> So it says that there's an input. Is it? What's going on with my tripod? The red light means that it's booting up. It's not gonna show anything, I don't think, for the time being. It show it starts in 720p. It will eventually go to 1080p. People, Apple says this is only capable of a 720p signal. That is actually false. The device is completely capable of doing 1920. There it goes. Whoa. Okay, purple. Um, there's the Linux thing that you use. It's called OSMC. It's easy to do, it's just not easy to actually open up a prompt, it's hard, you have to do SSH and other things. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, I had no idea for like the past years. Purple, again. Um, oh, I have to hook up the mouse. <laughs> the mouse wasn't going to work. I'm going to move this here, there we go, HDMI, 1920x1080. It's probably going to show a huge thing of code. I would assume, I mean it's Linux. No. Oh no, we just got a cursor right away. And there we go, no session for go away. And I love the sound of these old keyboards. Awesome. Clear that out. Although clear doesn't actually do anything, it just does this. <laughs> what if I do an invalid parameter? Dash F. It just doesn't care. <laughs> clear. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you type. Now it looks very simple and it it is, and that's one thing. So um um, what was I going to say? So you get a calculator here. I don't know. I think that can be seen. Um, you can do, let me see, image viewer. You can also download some other apps if you know how to do that. Um, and I've done that. So like volume I've done, I've added a little volume thing here. So because the default volume manager would only do HDMI, um, volume changing. And obviously that's a problem because the Apple TV's, um, HDMI is going right to the monitor and the monitor has no speakers. So I couldn't really adjust that, so I just had to use um, the, whatever this is, PCM, that's what it is. And those are the red and white jacks on the back. Let me, I'll move on to Cody in a little bit. But there's also a, a notepad here, so I can just type in whatever I want. Yes, this keyboard is an old Apple one. It has a little adapter on the back. Um, maybe I'll do a review on that if you really care that much. But it'll be very short. It's, there's not really much to do it on. Um, this... Whoa, I can't type. <laughs> this is a test of 
Kev. Wow, I'm bad. Uh, the keyboard. <laughs> Seems to work just fine. So, um, uh, no, I do not want to do that. Let me see. So, and then X archiver. This is to make zip archives. The basic user probably won't use this fact. I've never used this really once. Now, there's also a file manager here. Uh, let me see. Okay, I'm in the root. So, is there seriously one of these things in here? No, this is just, um, no, I won't. Oh. Whoops. Anyways, um, here's the boot logo. See, image viewer. Yay. This is actually what pops up when you boot Linux on an Apple TV. I'll show the little penguin thing in an Apple TV, so. Um, and then terminal. This is obviously where you can do your terminal things and view your directories and other things. Um, let me see. CD. I'm in root, so I don't think there's actually a folder for that. Nope. CD. Sys. Oh, wow. There's like barely anything. Anyways, let me try this. CD. You, some people are not going to know at all what I'm typing. Um, that's something. CD slash. I forgot to actually put a slash in there. Um, CD. Whoops. CD. Etc. There. See all that? That's all the files on the etc. thing. Even hidden ones. Um, and there's obviously some preferences. You can change your desktop and some of the... This is not locked to it. Uh, like you can... Change the style, do whatever you want. So yeah, also, let me see. And then finally, let's do Kodi. Kodi is the little TV thing. It actually does work windowed, and that's what I usually use it on. Probably put it full screen though, just for the enjoyment of the users. It just takes forever to load. It's, there it goes. Kodi, here it is. So here we are, There, the cursor works. It's a little bit laggy and it's fine. Is there any sound? Is this sound even plugged in? I just realized I don't. I'm not getting anything. Uh oh. I'm seriously not getting any noise. Sound on. Okay. Well. Oh. Okay. So the sound thing that is not working right. Okay. I'll deal with that later. Um. Probably because code, there it is. Uh, yeah, sound is on. Uh, is it plugged in right though? Hmm, I'll have to work on that. I don't, don't know what happened. Sound does not seem to work. I will check that with some music later. Um, oh, my mouse, there. Oh no, <laughs> Cody makes like everything lag. So if you're gonna use Cody, make sure that that's probably like the only thing that you want open because it will lag down the rest of the computer along with it. In fact, my cursor is being confusing. Uh, okay, there. Uh-oh, <laughs> updates. Update failed, well, go away. It's just showing a bunch of languages. What the heck is going on? So I'm just going to get out of there. There, sounds work. Cool. At least I think they do. Come on. Folder work. No. Oh, Cody just crashed. Well, okay. Default windowed. Full screen. Boom. There it is. So, uh, I think I have overscan turned on. Let me see. Resolution's fine. Monitor default. Um, that's it. Okay. Turn that off. So, settings level expert. So, yeah, you can see this is, if you actually do not hack it to use the desktop, it's just another TV looking thing. And it works with the mouse. I'm actually going to get the remote here real quick. So then you can see that this works with the remote if you use it in TV mode. Didn't expect this to happen. The back mini is actually adjusting the volume using the remote. I didn't expect that to happen, but that's obviously going to limit my functions using the remote. 
Unless I can maybe turn this around, that might work as well. If I'm like sitting here, it's not gonna... Wow, I didn't know that there was an IR blaster in these though. They kept it really hidden. Um, so yeah, you can see I can just use the remote here, you probably... And I can click on things. So yeah, that works just fine. I'm just gonna switch this back to windowed mode because I don't really use this that much. Uh, I don't use Kodi that much. I'm mainly a desktop guy. So I'm just gonna flip this right back to windowed mode. You can see remote still works perfectly fine and it lagged. It lags when you go to display because you have to adjust stuff. But see this works just fine. Internet access, I think you can actually use a web browser with this. Although when I tried it, it immediately froze the computer. <laughs> or the T Apple TV, so I'm just gonna close this. I'm gonna see how the IR blaster works on the Mac Mini though. I had no idea. But you can see uh with that coat with Cody closed, it does nothing. The it is actually receiving it. The light is there's a little light there which says uh that there is a remote access being used, so um it's a dim light, it's actually very hard to see. I don't think it's even picked up camera but there's a light there and it's telling me that the remote is being used um, so yeah yeah very basic Wi-Fi does work I forgot to mention this um, if you do decide to do whoops if you decide to do this yourself wireless will work it actually says wireless and it shows our network so yeah this is very basic in fact if you want to download basically anything you're gonna want this <laughs> the terminal and you're gonna want to know how to use the terminal because if you don't know how to use the terminal uh, that could be a problem. It's not very difficult to do Linux commands, such as if you want to download an app, sudo apt-get install, and then the name. I forgot to mention this app. The run command, um, just run. No processes, that's fine. I think I actually just type in some, whoop, I'm hitting catalyst lock. Leaf. Oh no, I forgot this caps like key is very finicky. There. Leaf pad. There. Yep, there it goes. Man, this is actually more responsive than this Mac Mini is. This Apple TV is. It's like actually quite... There's no commands, which kind of sucks, but there's no gestures. So yeah, this bar down here is completely customizable. You can add and remove a bunch of things. Like if you want to show the weather down here, there's one of them here. Um, where'd it go though? Uh, I do not really want to do that on camera, so, <laughs> because that literally says my, I'd have to type my exact location. So I'm just going to show off all the settings here real quick. Desktop preferences, um, whoops, I accidentally missed. I'll show that one in a little bit. Um, desktop preferences. Did I miss? I think I missed. It doesn't take this long. I did miss. Whoops. I was like waiting for nothing. Splash sad. Okay, I'll show that one later. In fact, I'll show this now. Splash sad, if anyone knows what this is, it is where if it crashes, it'll show this instead of the actual thing. I'll eventually show some of the other preferences that I actually added later. Like customize look and feel, this will let you change the style, like progress bars, this is the default and that's the only one, but you can change the icons, the mouse cursor, and I honestly like the one here, um, it just looks better. Or actually, it doesn't look any better, it just kind of looks, in my opinion, cooler. That's the default one. There's actually a lot of these ones. Um, you can see here, there are a ton of these. Let me see. Desktop session. I don't know what this does. Oh, this is the um, do not touch unless you know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> window manager. Um, that is just the window manager, obviously. If you change that, do not change it. It will probably screw up things if you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> Keyboard and mouse. Um, obviously, that's very self-explanatory. Um, Monitor settings. This will actually, if the screen resolution is wrong, it'll let you change it. I was actually tempted to change it to 60.05 um, to see if I get more out of monitor, but that's not even going to be noticeable to our eyes. So, preferred applications. Here we are. Um, this is a custom one that I uh, that's actually installed by default, although it's not in the preferences, so I had to like force it there <laughs> for some reason. Um, the, there is. <laughs> There's actually, is there a web browser in here? It says PC Man File Manager is the default. Oh, that's never mind, I can't read. Debian Sensible Browser is the default web browser. Mail Reader, there's nothing. Um, terminal Emulator, there's one of those as well. And the Mail Reader, there's no mail um, 
function on here by default. Whoops, there is no mail function on here by default. So if you get a mail app, um, that's what you can do that. And then the audio mixer is that I download this one. It's, um, I don't remember what's actually. Um, let me see. Switches. Yeah. I was trying to see because I could have given the command and that would have been so much easier to use. Anyways, audio mixer doesn't really do much, but yeah. So yeah, that's about it for the Apple TV here. It's not, well, I actually didn't even play any music, but, um, ow. So yeah, this device can totally do pretty much anything you want it to do. So, well, except for maybe some <laughs> web browsing is obviously a big one, but it will probably do that kind of slowly. So I would definitely, if you don't, if this is sitting in the corner of your closet or something like that, and you're not using it for anything, definitely um, try to do this project. Um, I will probably put a tutorial video in the description on how someone did that. Uh, I would suggest though that you get a, oh man, I would suggest that you get a fan on the top. It does get warm and eventually I think can shut down due to heat. So yeah, then you can hit log out here. Um, this will log it out obviously. Now this is actually a pain. Um, if you hit shut down, there it is. If you hit shut down, it will actually, since there's no switch at all, there was absolutely no power button or switch or anything, you'd have to unplug it and plug it back in for that to work. So usually I just hit like, uh, is there a lock? No, there's nothing actually. Suspend, what does that do? Oh, the <laughs> Come on, suspend doesn't do anything. Now there's also some way to get it to boot right into the prompt or the, not the prompt, the desktop, which is what I have it set to do. It took forever for me to find out actually how to do this. Um, and you get this error every time. I don't know what it means. Um, so if you do this yourself, you might have that kind of problem. I forgot, honestly, how to do that. Uh, whoops. I might do some research though if someone needs help. So I forgot to actually get into the specs of this thing. This actually has a, I'm going to open up the file browser here. Um, this has a 160 gigabyte drive. Um, I honestly found that awesome, but fuller properties root. Tell me how big this is. Actually, it says on the bottom here. Whoops. <laughs> no, I don't care about how big the... Ah, so, home. Oh, that's actually home. So, total, there's 100. This drive, this specifically has 160 gig drive in here. I think it came as 40, 80, and 160. Obviously, 160 gigabytes is probably going to be more than enough on this computer. In fact, for me, only 9 gigs is used. Okay, so that's it, pretty much. Uh, if you want to see me use this for more practical uses or anything, just leave it in the comments. If you need any help with any like technology and stuff, you can obviously ask me to help or ask me for help in the comment section of one of my videos. I'm gonna get a notification when I get a comment anyway, so it doesn't matter what video you post it on. Thank you guys so much for watching. Actually, <laughs> I literally just forgot. This device doesn't have Bluetooth. Just warning you on that. So yeah, just thank you guys so much for watching this video, uh, and I'll see you all later. Bye guys.